Hey everybody, welcome to the first of what will be mini Car Snubs road trips. So let me take you through the itinerary first. I have a work obligation that takes me to Las Vegas, so I figured I'd make it a little bit more fun and check out something nearby. So I'm gonna leave two days early and head to Zion National Park in Utah. It's just outside this town called Springdale. Never been, so I'm really excited to check it out. First, I'm leaving from my hometown here of Venice Beach in Los Angeles, California. We're gonna go through the desert, through Death Valley, and I should also mention it's August when I'm doing this, so temperatures will probably be around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're gonna go through Las Vegas. We'll probably run into a lot of traffic and on our way to Utah from there. Oh, did I also mention Utah is in the middle of flash flood warnings the entire time I'm gonna be there. So you're probably asking, what am I gonna be driving? Well, that's another, problem I might have to. Um, I did something that a lot of you guys have probably done. So I went on Priceline, which is my go-to travel site, and I got the best deal I could. But here's the thing, when you get those good deals, they don't tell you what you're getting. So I have what's called a supplier's choice. So I'm gonna get a car that I have no idea what I'm driving, and it's gonna go on an over 1,000 mile road trip with me. So let's find out what I get. I'm off to pick up my car now, and then we'll see what I got. Well, hey there, I bet you're probably thinking, I wonder what kind of car he got. Well, so am I, because <laughs> this is about four hours after I just filmed that. And I went to pick up my car. First of all, $30 in Uber to get there. And then they told me, oh, the reservation you booked through Priceline only allows 100 miles a day. Well, this one problem, First, this trip is 450 miles each way, and that's without any extra driving. That's straight there, straight back, nothing else. So conservatively, we'll say 1,000 miles, and this was a seven-day rental, so I'm already way over that. And then he goes, where are you going? I go, hey, going to Utah. Zion, man. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. The rental car company that Priceline gave me, they told me it's anywhere in the domestic United States. It's unlimited miles. Well, we know the unlimited miles part isn't true. And I guess this particular rental car company, Ace Rent-A-Car, I might as well shout them out for no good reason, to avoid them at least, that you can only go to California and Southern Nevada. You can't even do all of Nevada if you want to. I've never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. So. The plan was early in the morning, sun's up, car's out. Well, that's not gonna happen, obviously. So I think I found a solution tomorrow. It's gonna cost a lot more money, but it's with Hertz, which I hope if Tom Brady endorses, maybe he's with a better company. Fingers crossed, we'll find out tomorrow morning. Okay, we're about 16 hours later or so, uh, but Hertz hooked it up and I was actually got there just in time because the girl after me, they actually denied her a car. So I think I got the very last car and I wanted to keep it true to my original vision. So I did the supplier's choice again, but this time it was officially hurt. So I thought I was pretty safe and I didn't tell them where I was going. I wanted it to be a surprise. So whatever they thought would be the best car. And I think I got a perfect car to explore with. That's right, I got the good old Ford Explorer, AKA maybe a cop car, or at least some kind of federal agent, which could be a good thing. So this is a 2019 model. This is the last year of the previous generation. A new one came out in 2020, which most of you have probably seen. That could be a good thing because usually by the end of the model cycle, they work out all the bugs and kinks and shouldn't have any issues. And these are notoriously known for being tough. I mean, if the, if the police use them every day, and beat on them, then I hope I shouldn't have any issues in Utah. And the extra ground clearance will come in handy, especially with those flash floods I'm supposed to have. So let's check it out. Lots of space. This I got everything loaded up. This is what I need. Uh, third seat, I think, is kind of useless for me, but could be nice for someone else. The one kind of gripe I see right away is there's no uh, cargo cover, which kind of stinks, but the windows are pretty deeply tinted, so hopefully. No one gets curious to uh, grab anything. Going around, this is an XLT model. So it's not the best, not the worst, but pretty good spec for a rental car. Um, one gripe I have is when you when you get the last 
model of the cycle, you usually get the old technology too. It's usually about four or five years behind. Here's the first thing I noticed. When you come inside, no touch screen. It's got the basic sync system. Now my everyday car is a 2015 Ford and I have a touch screen. So Ford had the technology. They just decided not to put it in this model. Um, it does have start stop engine though. So that's kind of nice. Don't need a key. Um, other than that, I think it's a pretty sweet ride and it's gonna go well. And it is Friday in LA. And if you're not from LA, Friday is extra hellish for traffic. So I'm gonna get on the road and get going. I'll catch up with you in a bit. All right, just filled up with gas. I am in lovely Palmdale, California. Just taking in some of the nice views here before we proceed. Desert oasis, as I like to refer to it. But seriously, if you've never been to Palmdale, you can add it to your list of places you never have to travel to. <laughs> um, couple initial reactions from the Explorer. Overall, I like it really nice um, this touchscreen or lack of touchscreen is still inexcusable there's just it's just a mess of buttons I don't know who's dialing an entire phone number on this pad it's probably happened three times in the creation of every single Explorer that has had this um, climate control you definitely need it today check out the temperature 103 and I had about three quarters of a gallon of gas three quarters of a tank of gas but just to be safe, next up is Death Valley. And if it's 103 here in Palmdale, I'm going to assume it's about 120 in Death Valley. So that should get interesting. One nice thing, though, that you don't see too often on cars anymore. This does actually have a temperature gauge, which is nice. And even though it's been triple digits, it still hasn't gone over the halfway point, which I'm really happy about. Uh, this car is quiet. It is running right now. Um, I do like that part. Full tank of gas, like I said. But notice one thing. I thought it was strange when I picked up the car at the rental place that I couldn't even get 300 miles and it said it was full. So I thought maybe it's not quite full. Well, it is full now and I'm still at 292. So you can't even hit 300 miles on a tank of gas, which really stinks because I'm definitely gonna have to get gas one more time before I get to Zion in Utah. But hopefully I can at least get to Vegas. I'm about three hours away still from Vegas. Other than that, nice car. I mean, one thing I don't understand, sorry, coffee addiction. There's this little cup thing here. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's too small to fit a cup, but it's like bigger than change or anything like that. The only theory I can think of is that's where you put the key, which would be really weird, I guess. But if you don't like having your key in your pocket or your purse, I guess that's a good spot for it. Lots of storage, kind of nice wires. You got a, the standard USB, which I don't like to use because they usually charge very slow. So I brought my own, the cigarette lighter version. Huge center console, which is nice. Uh, the materials are all like nice and soft. They're actually pretty good. They feel like a, kind of a nicer level car, you know, which this is. But one thing I will say that impressed me, although I don't like the layout of it, the sound on the stereo is actually really great. So shout out to the sound engineers. I was cranking it on the way here. Nice acoustic sound. You can even optimize it for the sound for the driver. So that was nice. Um, but yeah, we'll proceed and I'll check back in with you guys in a bit. Of course, it wouldn't be a road trip without an issue. Here's the first one I found. Now, when I was leaving LA, traffic was pretty slow. So smooth sailing as far as the ride quality. And then once I got on the open stretch, I noticed started to shimmy a little bit as I sped up and I thought you know the road wasn't that great I thought you know maybe it's a bad road but now it's happened a few times and now I'm on a really smooth freeway and when I get over about 70 miles or so I notice it starts to shake and it gets pretty aggressive so right now I'm doing about 65 keep an eye on these back headrests right there if you see those, uh, watch this as I speed up a little bit. She gets real shaky, so it makes me a little bit nervous. I think it's okay. Uh, hopefully it's just something simple, like a tires are out of balance or something like that. But that's the thing, like I told you, this is a 2019 model 
and it's got 38,000 miles on it. Now, pre-pandemic, this car would have already been sent to the auction, sold by Hertz or whatever random car rental place, but now that we're in this pinch for cars, uh, car rental shops are holding on to these cars a little bit longer, and you know how people drive a rental. They use it like it's not their car. <laughs> so this car's definitely been abused, but I think it's a good test because this would be potentially a car that you would find on the lot. You know, it's a few years old. It's got a little bit of miles, but it's still quite new. But even a car this new can already have some issues. But hopefully this is the worst one we find on the trip, but it's still early. All right, getting our first rain. This actually happened two days ago, I think on this same stretch of road, maybe about 30 miles ahead. And they closed the entire freeway for three hours. Everyone was stuck here. So we're really hoping that doesn't happen today. Some more weather fun. We got a sandstorm. <laughs> we went from rainstorm to sandstorm. There's even some dust devils out there if you can catch that. Here's what I was talking about earlier. So this flooded all through here and they actually closed this entire freeway in Prim, which is the city you can see just up there. So this was all shut down for about three hours because the water went directly over the road. Thankfully, it stopped raining right away and I think we are in the clear. Vegas is next. Viva Las Vegas. Made it there. A little bit of rain on the way, but pretty unscathed altogether. And we're gonna be running in traffic. It is rush hour on a Friday night, so it is to be expected. Once I get through this little patch, it should be pretty smooth sailing, about two more hours to Zion. A full rainbow over Vegas, an entire full rainbow. Super cool weather day. Well, with all that rain earlier, and the rainbow, I figured it'd be a pretty amazing sunset, and it is. Uh, about an hour and a half away from Zion here. Just wanted to hop on before it gets too dark. Uh, there's one important point that I forgot to mention. I always think, that if you're gonna spend considerable time in a car, that it should have a name. So I had some time to think about this, about seven hours into this road trip. And since the Explorer likes to shake, I'm gonna name her Shanice. Shaky Shanice. I'll leave you with that for the night. Okay, long trip, about eight hours exactly. Just got to my hotel here, outside of Zion, about 15 minutes or so. So I'll be going there in the morning. Ironically, weird weather day, we had rain, rainbows, sandstorms, 110 degree heat. And the town that my hotel in is in is called Hurricane. Fitting, I guess. Well, no drama really besides uh, shaky Shanice. The shake, I'm not gonna worry about it, I guess. If it was my personal car, I would be really annoyed and upset about it. But I'm just pretending that every time I go a little bit above the speed limit, uh, my massaging seats kick in. So <laughs> speaking of massaging seats, uh, the seats are very comfortable. I spent eight hours in here. I only stopped twice along the whole trip and my back feels good. Usually I have a horrible back. I've had surgeries and doing good. So see you guys in the morning. Okay, well, as you can see, the Explorer made it to Zion, which is where I am right now. Check this out. This place is awesome. Um, I'm at the river walk right now, just about to enter the Narrows, which is like the most famous part of it. It's a busy day at the park, and I just saw a sign that said flash floods are probable. So we'll see how that goes. As far as the Explorer, I had to leave it in the nearby town of Springdale. It's the first town right outside the entrance. Most expensive street parking ever. $20 just to park on the street. But it's the only way in. Parking was full unless you got here before like 8 a.m. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a morning person. I actually didn't make it to the park until about noon. All right, here's the start of the Narrows. I thought I could avoid getting wet. Apparently not. Extremely happy I brought a second pair of shoes now. Here we go. Okay, last Zion video, I swear, because I know this is a car video. I just wanted you guys to see how beautiful this is. This is the Narrows, deep in. Lots of water, as you can see, I'm actually standing in the water right now. Um, it got up to about thigh high at the worst, but incredible. If you ever get the chance, check out Zion.
Just leaving Zion now. It did rain for a little bit. And of course, not to be outdone by last night's rainbow. Today we get a double rainbow. Okay, just about to head out of Zion. Going to Vegas, about two hour drive. Got the football game to get to. It's gonna be the Raiders versus my Minnesota Vikings. Never been to that new Allegiant Stadium, so I'm really excited to check it out. Before I head out, I just, I kept thinking about that shaking. It's driving me crazy. I know I won't be able to fix it, but I have a theory, and I think it has to do with the weights on the wheels. So, you know, a lot of times the balance out wheels, they, they gotta put some uh, counterweights to kind of make sure it's all balanced out. So they look like, if you can see in here, they look like these. Now on, on this side here, these are half ounce weights, these bigger ones. These smaller ones are quarter ounce. So this is the front passenger side. There's three quarter ounce and there's two half ounce. Probably about standard, not, not too much of a concern, but check out the back wheels where I feel all the shaking. This is the back passenger side. And if you look here, look at all those weights. We got, these are all half ounce here. One, two, three, four times two, so that's eight. Three more back there. There's 11 half ounce weights. That's five and a half ounces of extra weight. That means this wheel was very out of balance or bent or just defective in the first place, I think, because that is a ton of weight. And the same thing on the other side, check this out. Look at the line here. You got two over here and then go to oh, down here a little bit. You got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then three quarter ounces in the back. So almost as much weight spread over a huge distance I'm not an expert, but I think that looks a little suspect. Let's check out the front driver's side. Here we go. Just two. So it's, it's really interesting that the front wheels only have a couple weights, which is about normal. And the back ones have a ton of weight on them. I'll give you a look at this one again. It's wild how many weights are on there. So. I have a feeling that might be the issue. Maybe just a bad tire shop that did this. Uh, at 40,000 miles, I gotta assume that they put an extra set of tires on here and maybe when that new set of tires got put on, whoever balanced them just got them way out of whack. So that's my theory. All right, Shanice made it to Vegas. This is where she's gonna park for a bit. Um, just got a little bit of running around in town to do for some work interviews and stuff. So for the most part, the Explorer will be in the garage, staying at Encore at Wynn. Should be pretty awesome. I thought this would be a nice little section of road for you to look at while I talk about leaving Vegas, heading back home to LA. I'm gonna to stick to the mantra that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas because no one sticks to that anymore and I'm gonna do it. But anyways, as always, Vegas was a great time. Too much drinking, too much eating, but that's kind of the whole point. Got some pool in and it was a really good trip. So on the way home now, we gotta have at least like one pit stop. I've done this trip so often that I have like favorite little spots. And I'm gonna stop halfway in Barstow, California. It's almost exactly halfway between Vegas and LA. There's a tiny little Mexican restaurant that I bet you almost everyone watching this does not know about. It's called La Mesa. It's a husband and wife who run it and it's so good and it's such a great deal. Like $10, you'll get the best burrito you've ever had in your life. The restaurant looks like a house. You wouldn't even know it's an actual restaurant and it's actually pretty hard to find because they don't even have like an online presence. So do yourself a favor. If you're traveling between Vegas and LA, stop in Barstow, get a burrito and thank me later. All right, back home in Los Angeles. Obviously, the Explorer made it safe. Just had to keep it under 80 or so with that shakiness. Uh, 1,012 miles, and I did a full calculation of the MPG in this, and it got about 22 miles per gallon total. So not great, but not horrible either. And you gotta keep in mind, it was triple digits, had the AC blast in 24-7, while I was driving as well. So that definitely eats up your gas mileage. Uh, this one in particular has the uh, base engine that was offered in 2019 of the 3.5 liter V6 with 290 horsepower, obviously automatic transmission as well. Uh, another engine that had about the same amount of power and that a lot of people really love is Ford's EcoBoost. 
uh, four cylinder, which you could get as well. Um, about 280 horsepower with that one, but you got about five miles per gallon or so better mileage. So that would have definitely came in handy and saved a few dollars. Uh, top of the line engine is actually the same engine that's in the truck, but it's twin turbocharged. And that goes all the way up to 365 horsepower. Obviously the fun one of the group, but you're gonna eat the mileage as well. Uh, pretty impressed with this car though. I will say I was looking up online to buy one. About 17 to $20,000 is where you can get a similar year, about three years old at this point, and mileage around 40,000 miles. I think that's a steal. A new one would cost you, uh, just starting price for the base model is gonna be over $40,000. So half price, still a relatively new car. And you know why I like cars that are just a couple years old? You're not afraid to get them scratched up. You know, you buy that brand new car, it's got that new car smell, it's perfect, and then someone dings their shopping cart into your car and it makes you insane. Well, if you got this, I don't think you're gonna be as mad about that because chances are there's probably a couple scratches on it already. And if you're gonna be taking road trips and things of this nature, that kind of stuff is gonna happen. So save yourself half the money and get something three years old, still got a lot of the tech, um, the only tech upgrade I would really do is that tiny touchscreen. You need like Superman vision to even see the, the backup camera. It's so tiny, it's, it's worthless. But thankfully this has the uh, backup sensors as well, which I find to be a lot more useful than a camera that is not a very good picture and just very small and not high def at all. So upgrade that. You know, three, $400, you can find a really nice fully touchscreen uh, Apple CarPlay model. Uh, there's plenty of space on the dashboard for that to slide right in. It would look like it came straight out of the factory and it's an easy solution. So do I recommend the Ford Explorer? Yeah, I really do. It's a great car. It keeps you under the radar. And you know what? If you want that cop car look where maybe you'll get a black or a white one, and if that's your thing, you know, it could work out to your advantage. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to like the video, uh, subscribe to Car Snub's channel, and leave any comments that you like. Maybe you have a solution on why this thing shakes that I overlooked, or any other matter. If there's other cars you want, to, you want me to review, go on a road trip with, any suggestions for a great road trip, I'm open to it all. But until then, I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.